Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado, registered pharmacist number 12275. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. Our number 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. We welcome your calls on the bright side. If you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. We want to be your go-to resource for health information, for the good news about the health and healing powers of the human body. Nobody has to be condemned to a long-term chronic degenerative disease. Nobody should ever have to be on a prescription drug for the rest of their life, as we so often hear from the representatives of the medical model. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. If you have questions about formulations, ingredients, our Truth Skin Health products, which you can find out all about at truthtreatments.com, by the way, including our Truth Retinol Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. If you have questions or comments about our Truth Health products, Truth Skin Health products, we'd love to hear from you as well at 844-236-6010. And, of course, if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can head over to my blog, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. You can order products right off the websites, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Make some money while you're doing it. Make some money while you're changing lives. Make some money while you're helping people get better. What could be What could be better than that? Not only will you be making money, but you'll be helping improve people's lives as well. That's what longevity is all about. That's what we're all about here on the Bright Side. And if you're interested, and if you want to start yourself a longevity business, please head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, and they can tell you all about it. All right, we are going to finish talking about beta-glucan, the soluble fiber, fiber that dissolves in water that fights cancer, protects the heart, protects the circulatory system, lowers blood fats. It's like a natural statin drug, a non-toxic statin drug. It lowers cholesterol without affecting biochemistry. It sort of mops it up, sucks up excess fats and excess cholesterol. And then, as we spoke about yesterday, some of the most notable benefits for beta-glucan involves the health of the skin. In fact, this is where beta-glucan first became recognized as a healing tool back in the early part of the 20th century. Polysaccharides, long chains of sugar, poly meaning many, saccharides meaning chain. Uh, pieces of sugar, chunks of sugar, so polysaccharides, long chains of, made up of chunks of sugar, have been used in the world of skin care, mostly as thickeners. They're still used today in the world of skin care and also in shampoos as thickeners. You've probably seen, if you've, if you've, read in, if you've uh, uh, looked at ingredient decks on your shampoo or on your, on your cleansers, you may have seen something called hydroxycellulose or methylcellulose or hydroxypropylcellulose. These are all various forms of cellulose, various forms of fiber. 
uh, polysaccharides, if you will, and they're used to thicken products, and they're somewhat prized in the world of skin and, and hair care because they'll thicken, but they won't interfere with formulations. They are inert. Fibers, this is one of the benefits of fibers, is they're basically inert, with the notable exception of beta-glucan, which is far from inert. In fact, skincare companies started to notice back in the 1920s or 1930s that there were some pretty neat little benefits that you got from beta-glucan, including improving wrinkles, including moisturizing, anti-aging of the skin. Problem was, it was difficult to extract beta-glucan from, from uh, all of the various sources in nature that it's found in. I mean, beta-glucan is found everywhere. It's one of, as we said yesterday, it's one of the most ubiquitous compounds on planet Earth. It's found in yeast, it's found in algae, it's found in plants of all kinds. But it was difficult to extract and to purify beta-glucan until oh, probably the later part, the latter part of the, uh, of the 1900s. And on top of that, beta-glucan was not patentable. You couldn't really patent beta-glucan by itself. You could patent beta-glucan use, the use of beta-glucan, but you couldn't patent beta-glucan as a substance. There were companies that did try to, and they did patent actually, beta-glucan for specific anti-aging applications. One company called Shackley that is still around, an MLM company, they started selling a beta-glucan cream in the 1980s that they had patented. Other huge companies took out patents on beta-glucan for its use as, anti, as an anti-wrinkle substance or as an anti-aging substance. Colgate took out a patent on it. Seba Geigy, which, was a, which is a huge drug company now called Novartis, they had a patent on beta-glucan topicals. But for some reason, none of it really ever caught on. The fact is, however that beta-glucan, even though beta-glucan topical products have not really caught on in the marketplace, that has a lot, has more to do with poor marketing and poor formulations than the fact that beta-glucan doesn't work because I'm here to tell you it does. I've seen it work. I've seen it in my products work and I've been formulating with it for a long time, almost 30 years. And there's numerous studies that talk about how well beta-glucan works as a topical product. One of the most exciting ways that you can use beta-glucan, and again, there's lots of studies to show this, is to address skin issues when it comes to wound healing. Beta-glucan is notable for its anti-aging properties, but it's also a wonderful wound healer. Not that that should surprise anybody, because wound healing and anti-aging are basically the same kind of chemistry. Both wound healing and anti-aging involve the stimulation of connective tissue, the stimulation of new skin cells. So if something's going to be good for anti-aging, it's also going to have some wound healing properties, and this is true about beta-glucan. Beta-glucan has been used quite successfully to accelerate the healing of burns. It's been shown to help diabetics who are confronted with slow healing wounds. This is a major clinical problem, as anybody who has diabetes will tell you, slow healing wounds. And you could use beta-glucan to accelerate the healing of diabetic wounds. According to a 2009 article published in the American Journal of Clinical Surgery, wound healing in diabetic rats was significantly accelerated by oral administration of beta-glucan by giving rats beta-glucan orally. That means you can use beta-glucan orally as well as you can topically to accelerate the healing of wounds and also for anti-aging. According to another article, this is published on the website, Medscape beta-glucan can be helpful for healing wounds and that are associated with the chronic use of steroid creams. Beta-glucan uh, enhanced the, the uh, percentage of wound contraction, improved the, the growth of surface cells, improved the strength of the skin, and improved amino acids that are uh, improved the uh, production of collagen that are associated with amino acids like hydroxyproline. Finally, uh, the researchers that were quoted on Medscape uh, stated that the systemic and topical, this is a quote, quote, the systemic and topical beta-glucan formulations improve wound healing that has been impaired by steroids, unquote. And you know what? You can make your own beta-glucan products. You don't need to wait for Shackley or Seba Guy or Novartis to come up with a beta-glucan product. You can make your own beta-glucan skin care, and I'll tell you how you do that when we come back from our break. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back. 
back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us. I'm pharmacist Ben 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, anything we're talking about here today. Of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, we've got lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we'll get your calls here in our next segment, as we always do on the bright side. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, benfuchsarchives.com, and you can also purchase longevity products off the websites as well, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, brightsideben.com, and benfuchsarchives.com. You can also purchase truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, dark spots, accelerated aging. If you want to prevent aging, prevent the formation of wrinkles. It's always easier to prevent wrinkles than it is to reverse them. Although I will tell you that a lot of folks are reversing their fine lines and wrinkles using our Truth 5% Retinol Gel, as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. You can find out all about our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, I want to finish up talking about beta-glucan, and then we'll move on to uh, talking about another type of fiber, insoluble fiber is somewhat different than soluble fiber has its own health benefits its own spectrum of health benefits that differ from from uh, soluble fiber and insoluble fiber as we'll come to find out it plays a really interesting role if you're going ketogenic remember we started talking about all of these fibers and carnitine and, and uh, later on we'll talk about lipoic acid we've talked about vitamin E we've talked about fasting and this all has to do with the ketogenic diet if you're uh, going to the longevity convention by the way which starts today or tomorrow I will be doing two talks on the ketogenic diet hope to see you out there in Salt Lake City if you're on the bubble uh, on the fence about coming, you really should, especially if you're um, part of the longevity family and you've never been to a convention. They really are cool. You get to meet a lot of people who are like-minded, and you get to hear a lot of wonderful success stories, and I'm talking really incredible success stories. Very inspiring couple of days in, uh, at the longevity convention, and I will be doing a talk on the ketogenic diet. So, beta-glucan. Love the stuff. You can make your own topical beta-glucan products for anti-aging, also for wound healing. You can make your own beta-glucan topical products for sun protection. I actually formulated a beta-glucan spray many years ago. Never really called it a beta-glucan spray. Some of you guys know the product I'm talking about. It was made with beta-glucan. I put some hyaluronic acid in there, and I recommended that people use it when they're out in the sun. Beta-glucan being sun protected. And you can make your own beta-glucan spray. Just tip. You can make your own beta-glucan products, topical products. Just get some beta-glucan capsules. And by the way, Longevity's got a couple of really neat beta-glucan containing products, beta-glucan containing capsules. Uh, they're part of what are called the Restart Your Life line, uh, Restart Your Life product line, I should say. Uh, I forgot the names of them. They got these long, long names, RYL300, I believe, is one of them. Uh, I forgot what the other one is. They're beta-glucan containing t uh, oral products, and they recommend them for the immune system, and indeed they are wonderful for the immune system. But as you know, if you've been listening to this program for the last couple of days, that you'll get lots of other benefits when you use your beta-glucan. And you could also take your Restart Your Life beta-glucan products from Longevity. You could take the capsule, and you can break it open, and you could put it in your favorite cream or lotion. And you can get yourself a nice beta-glucan containing cream or lotion, beta-glucan anti-aging product. You can turn your moisturizer, your, you know, most moisturizers aren't going to do anything for your skin, but you can turn it into an active product by sprinkling in some Restart Your Life Beta-Glucan right in the product, right in your cream. It goes water-soluble, it goes right into your cream or lotion. As I say, you can also add it to water and make a beta-glucan spray that could be used as a sun protection product or as a topical moisturizing spritz. And unlike most skincare products, if you add beta-glucan to your product, it's going to work. It's going to do something. It's going to have activity. Add it to green tea. Make yourself a green tea solution or a green tea product and... Uh, 
add some beta-glucan in there. The green tea is sun protecting, and the beta-glucan is sun protecting. You can also add a little bit of uh, lemon juice or orange juice or lemon peel or orange peel. The limonene and the essential oils from the peel will also protect your skin from the sun. If you make it cold, if you keep it in an ice chest or in a cooler, it'll be nice and refreshing. Not only will this be a nice way to cool down if you're out in the sun, but you'll also get anti-aging and sun protectant benefits too. So many wonderful things from this stuff, beta-glucan. I love multifunctionality. I love multifunctional ingredients. I love non-toxic ingredients, and I love cheap ingredients. And beta-glucan fits the bill for all of those, uh, all those criteria. It's multifunctional, it's non-toxic, and it's not as cheap as it should be, but it is still relatively expen inexpensive. So beta-glucan is a type of fiber that dissolves in water, so-called soluble fiber. A second class of fiber is called in soluble fiber, like the soluble stuff, it's not digestible. Neither fiber is uh, digestible. In fact, that's one of the ways you define fiber is it's not digestible, at least not digestible by humans. And that's a very important point as we will talk about here in just a moment. Unlike soluble fiber, insoluble fiber does not have the same kind of effects, uh, same kind of properties on lowering blood cholesterol. Soluble fiber will lower your blood fats and, and blood cholesterol. And in my humble opinion, anybody who's dealing with elevated blood fats, and that includes all diabetics or pre-diabetics, and that includes most people who have heart disease, should be using a form of soluble fiber on a regular basis, if not on a daily basis. If you don't want to spend the money on beta-glucan, you can get all kinds of fiber products. Products at the at the health food store. Of course, you can you can eat lots of fiber-containing veggies and fruits, including beans and legumes and mushrooms. Insoluble fiber does not have those same kind of effects on mopping up blood fats and cholesterol. Insoluble fiber doesn't suck up fluids like soluble fiber does, but that doesn't mean that insoluble fiber doesn't have health benefits. It's got wonderful health benefits. It's indigestible by humans, but it is digestible by bacteria. In fact, animals don't really digest cellulose either, or don't digest insoluble fiber either. It's the bacteria that live in the guts of cows and giraffes and, and, um, and, and uh, goats and sheep and what we call ruminant animals that digest the fiber. Understanding the, pro the, the role that bacteria play in digesting fiber, in digesting insoluble fiber, is key to understanding how to leverage the power of insoluble fiber. When bacteria digest insoluble fiber, they produce some incredibly important health compounds. Of course, this does presuppose that you've got enough bacteria, you've got the right kind of bacteria, and you're not doing stuff that compromises the integrity of the intestine or the life of the bacterial flora. Now, we've talked about probiotics a lot, and we will continue talking about probiotics a lot. Probiotics are important. Good bacteria, I should say, that live in the gut are important for communicating to the intestine. They help our our intestinal muscles work correctly. They help, they help our intestine digest food. They digest things themselves, the bacteria do. They digest fats and cholesterol. They help the body process hormones. They act to support the immune system. There's so many ways that these bacteria in the gut help improve our health. But one of the things they have an ability to do is digest fiber and then in response excrete or secrete wonderful health inducing compounds. Specifically if you're using the ketogenic diet. Yes, using insoluble fiber can help you help you if you're doing the ketogenic diet because of this bacterial digestion of the fiber. Alright, I'm pharmacist Ben. We'll continue when we come back from our break. You're listening to the bright side. Back on the bright side, pharmacist Ben here. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have questions about anything we're talking about today, the ketogenic diet, beta-glucan, fiber, digestive health, or if you have questions about our formu uh, longevity formulations or our truth skin health formulations, of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to say hi and contribute to the conversation, we love hearing from you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you're interested in purchasing truth skin health products, if you want to find out what all the buzz is about, if you want to go out without your makeup or foundation, that's the greatest compliment that I get about our truth skin health products is people say they can go out without their makeup go out without their foundation. You really shouldn't need to wear makeup. If your skin is healthy and beautiful, you don't need to wear makeup. 
what is makeup really? It's a way of pretending that your skin is healthy and beautiful. Why not make your skin healthy and beautiful in the first place? Using nutritional supplementation and using topical nutrition like vitamin C and retinol, which you'll find in our Truth Skin Health products. TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com. Okay, we'll get your calls here in just a moment. Got a couple things I, I want to tell you about here. This is from the American Physiological Society. Could the paleo diet benefit heart health? We haven't really talked too much about the paleo diet because we've been spending so much time talking about the keto diet, the ketogenic diet. Here's the deal. The paleo diet is a good diet. It's a good way to lose weight. And um, that's one of the things these guys found out in this study from the American Physiologic Society. Folks who went on the paleo diet and they ate as much as they want, but they still lost weight. Here's the problem though with the paleo diet and why I like the ketogenic diet a little bit better, especially when it comes to losing weight. See, protein can get turned into fat and that's a problem. People think that they can eat all the protein that, all the protein that they want and the body is very efficient at turning certain amino acids into fat, into making sugar from these amino acids, which ultimately will get turned into fat. This is a process that goes by the fancy name gluconeogenesis gluconeogenesis, making gluco, making glucose, gluco, in this new neo way, neogenesis, new way, yeah, new way of making things, a gluconeogenesis, a new way of making sugar, meaning that this is not like the ordinary way of making, uh, of creating energy in the body. This is a new way. This is a, this is an emergency way, if you will, when the body doesn't have a lot of sugar, it'll go into gluconeogenesis and it's very efficient at doing this. Interestingly, there's a, there are some amino acids that are ketogenic, that are not glucogenic. Most amino acids can get turned into glucose, but there are a couple that can help you with the ketogenic diet. Lysine, leucine, these are found in high protein foods, tryptophan, the so-called branched chain amino acids, leucine and isoleucine, they can help you make ketones. So if you're going ketogenic, you might want to get yourself on some branched chain amino acids or maybe take some lysine supplements or even tryptophan supplements or make sure that you're doing lots of high protein foods, but you got to be careful with the protein. That's why the supplements can be helpful because the protein that you're using, the high protein foods, contains amino acids that can get turned into sugar and then fat. And that's why sometimes people don't lose a lot of weight on the paleo diet. So I like the ketogenic diet a little bit better than the paleo diet, but according to this article here, uh, the paleo diet may also have benefits for folks uh, who are dealing with uh, cardiovascular health issues. That's because of the low carb. Always best to go low carb, whether you call it paleo or keto or whatever aspect of, uh, of uh, dietary strategy you want to use. The bottom line, the fundamental aspect of a good dietary strategy is low carbohydrate, low carb. Now, I'm not saying no carb. I said low carb. And when you go with your carbs, you want to go vegetable carbs as much as possible. All right. Speaking of weight gain, this is also from uh, the American Physiological Society, research from Vanderbilt University. Researchers target gut bacteria to reduce weight. And that, that's uh, uh, another strategy for losing weight is to make sure that you got enough bacteria, not got enough gut bacteria, that your probiotics, that your um, bacterial flora are, are functioning fully and you got enough of them in your gut. This is why antibiotics can be such a problem. And speaking of antibiotics, yet another study on antibiotics has come out. Uh, this one's for children who are on antibiotics, who are children who are using antibiotics are more prone towards allergies as they get older. No surprise there because the gut, the, uh, the intestine, the home of the microbiome plays a major role in the immune system. This is probably uh, gut bacteria's most important role. Yet another uh, aspect or another, uh, another article that uh, talks about gut bacteria and the importance of gut bacteria for immunity. Gut bacteria affect immune recovery in HIV patients. This is from the University of Valencia in Spain. An international study coordinated by Spanish research institutes has found that gut bacteria play a role in the immune recovery of HIV. What else do you need to hear, folks? about gut bacteria to know that it's smart to get yourself on a good probiotic supplement like the nightly essence from longevity to make sure you're eating sauerkraut and kefir and yogurt and miso and tempeh and fermented foods make sure you're keeping your intestine pristine or at least home at least 
at least a non-toxic home for good bacteria by using vegetable fiber. We'll talk about the importance of fiber for gut bacteria and ketogenesis coming up on a future Bright Side show. And also, also, I can't say this enough, staying away as much as you can, as best as you can, staying away from antibiotics and certainly not staying on an antibiotic regimen for life as uh, we had a gal tell us yesterday the day before on the bright side, uh, that her dentist told her she's going to be an antibiotic the rest of her life. Bad medicine, B-A-D, capital B, bad medicine to be on an antibiotic for the rest of your life. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Good morning, Rory. Oh, I just dropped Rory. Rory, call back. I apologize. That was me. Call back. We'll get you right up. Cheryl in Georgia, what's going on? Welcome to the bright side. Hi, how are you? I've got a question regarding soy that is put in the vitamins. You hear everything about soy being so bad. Is it okay? Well, here's the deal with soy. Um, when you there's, The soy is a plant, and plants contain different components. Not all of the components are going to be problematic. The, the parts you've got to worry about when it comes to soy are, number one, the GMO. I guess, that, I guess GMO is a problem. So if it's non, right, I'm, assuming, right, right. I'm assuming non-GMO, okay, because GMO is definitely going to be a problem. So let's say non-GMO soy. It's not necessarily uh, the whole soy plant that's the problem. It's the estrogens in the soy, which are located in the fatty parts. Soy oil, for example example, is a problem. Uh, uh, vitamin E for, is derived from soy, and once the vitamin E is derived from soy, I'm not necessarily sure that you're going to have a problem with vitamin E derived soy. You're talking about soy allergies and, and soy intolerances, that kind of thing? Well, I, I'm talking about the, the estrogen aspect on maybe increasing... The- the Let's estrogen, answer. yeah, phytoestrogens. Here's a, there's a couple things. There's a couple things about the phytoestrogens in soy. Those tend to be concentrated in the fatty part of the soy. Okay, so if you're eating the whole bean, you'll probably get it. But if you're just getting soy protein, you might not get a significant. You shouldn't anyway get a significant amount of, of the phytoestrogens. You might get some. I'm not gonna say you get zero, but the real problem is gonna be in the soy oil the fatty part of the soy. That having been said, soy's got a lot of other problems associated with it that are not, a, not linked to the estrogen. So when you say soy and vitamins, it depends on what you're getting. Are you talking about soy protein? Are you talking about some soy excipient? What part of the soy plant are you talking about when it comes to reading the ingredient deck? Hang, hang tight. Um, I want to finish this up. This is an important subject, Cheryl. And we got to uh, take okay. a break. So don't go away. Stay on hold. Okay. And uh, we'll, get to, we'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking a little bit about soy and soy protein, and there's all kinds of debate about soy. Um, This is the way I look at it, Cheryl. Are you there, ma'am? Yes, I'm here. Okay, okay. so you've got different parts of the soy plant. You've got the soy protein. You've got the soy fat. You've got the soy sugars, and then you have the fiber from soy. The fiber from soybeans, uh, uh, that's the so- insoluble and soluble fiber, and they've got tremendous benefits, as we've been talking about with fiber now for a couple of days. And uh, we'll talk about insoluble fiber. That's great stuff. I wouldn't, you don't have to worry about the fiber, soy fiber. The real problem comes from the sugars which can be difficult for the body to process and can cause bloating and gas. Uh, The fats, which is where the plant estrogens are, so things like soy oil, soy milk, um, uh, soy ice cream, anything that's got the fatty component of soy, that might have some phytoestrogens in there, and that's where you want to be a little bit careful. But there are some naturopaths will tell you that the phytoestrogens in soy uh, the the uh, flavonoids is what they're technically called in soy that act like estrogen. They have health benefits for some people, especially if you're going through menopause. So you're going to have to decide that for yourself. Personally, I stay away from uh, soy oil and fatty th- soy milk and, and anything that's fatty that is derived from soy. The soybean itself, by the way, raw soybeans are definitely a problem. And you always nobody eats raw soybeans, uh, but if you were, they would that would definitely be a problem. There's all kinds of anti nutrients in that in those and that's why uh, for uh, when when indigenous cultures and when the asian people uh, throughout history ate a lot of soy they they fermented it or they processed it some way uh, so that they would release those or break down those anti-nutrients and then there's the soy protein there are certainly advantages to using soy protein especially if you're a vegetarian uh, there are some good amino acids in soy protein
protein. Uh, you may or may not get some of those anti-nutrients depending on how purified your soy protein is. Certainly, they don't add any of the anti-nutrients, but depending on how purified the soy protein is, you may or may not get some of the some of the anti-nutrients or even the phytoestrogens in there because a lot of times protein does have residual amounts of fat and, and um, that, that theoretically could contain some phytoestrogens. But uh, I know a lot of bodybuilders who do quite well uh, using soy protein and a lot of vegetarian bodybuilders who just use soy protein. So uh, I don't know if I'd worry about it that much. I, I'm not still, I hope I answered your question because I, I still don't know what well, kind of soy was in your vitamins. Well, it says it's a vitamin and it's a very good Vitamin and what, what, it's what does it say about it's, soy? What kind of soy? It says may contain soy. Oh yeah, that's just oh. that's just at the factory. If it says may contain soy, or sometimes they'll say may contain gluten. You know, if it says may contain, right. that means in the manufacturing process there may be some contaminants, and they want to warn yeah, you about it if you happen to be allergic. But if it's not on the ingredient deck, they didn't add the soy in there. Okay. Well, I was just wondering because it's a very very good. I wouldn't product. worry about it. I wouldn't worry about it a bit. I would just see how okay. I would just yeah, see how okay. you did with it. That sounds like a CYA type deal where if somebody were yeah. to somehow get a reaction, they could say, "Oh, well, we warned you it may contain soy." But I don't th that's not going to be a I would highly doubt that. Oh, okay. That would be a problem. Okay. Um okay, I have a friend real quick. Uh she says she forgets to breathe and can't remember how. I thought that was an autonomic response. <laughs> she forgets to breathe. She doesn't forget to breathe. Nobody forgets to breathe because she has That's no control. What I told her. She yeah. don't have control over the breathing process. You're dead if you forget to breathe. However, what she may be noticing is that when she gets a surge of cortisol and she may have steady high levels of cortisol, uh, breathing becomes shallow uh, because cortisol will cause uh, uh, sh uh, shallow breathing. Stress, the stress response, will cause shallow breathing. And also, we tend to we tend to stop breathing when we're under serious duress. At least, at least for a split it, yeah. second. Like, think about yeah, if you I've think about it. something lousy for a second, Cheryl. Like something bad or something unpleasant or something you you're right. worried about or you don't like. You'll notice you're holding your breath. You notice yeah, it. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, right? but we I'll, all do it. Yeah, Everybody does yeah. it. We yeah. hold our breath. She, we hold she our breath. Can't remember. Yeah. Well, yeah. She, she, she probably she can't doesn't remember to breathe. No, she's, I mean, this she's, is weird. Weird conversation. Yeah, she's, she's feeling the fact that she's stopping her breath when she when something crappy crosses her mind. You know, for for a lot of us, if not most of us, when something lousy crosses our mind, we know it. But if something lousy is constantly crossing our minds, we tend to not know it. We, we don't notice it. So she may just be right, noticing right. the part where she's not breathing, but not noticing the crappy thought that precedes it. Power of positive thinking, man, I'm telling you. Yeah, she said it runs in her family, and it's genetic. I thought, oh, my gosh. Okay. Oh, you know, I, have, I, I know what you're talking about. Sometimes you hear the craziest things, and, you, and they're your friends, and you don't want to say, you know what, you're crazy, because they're your friends. So you just kind of like, right. like, you know, I know I know exactly what you're talking about. What else is going on? How, can, how else can we help you? Oh, no, that's, that's fine. Uh, let's see. Uh, have you heard about the, a lady from Scotland named Philly Anderson? No. Tell me about her. Oh, look her up. Write her name. C-H-I-L-L-Y Anderson. Okay. What's her deal? And she's, she's on YouTube. Well, she was diagnosed with breast cancer, and she cured herself. I love very, it. Shilly, very, Shilly Anderson? That, no, Philly. S-T-H-I-L-L-Y. Stilly Anderson. S-T-H? No, S-T. Wait, Philly, like the P-H. Okay, gotcha. All right. Yeah. Uh, All right. So, so she cured herself of the, of the of breast cancer, like stage four, yes. stage three. Awesome! I it love was that. Stage two. It was stage two, but it had it was the one where they they found more than one, and uh, she gave them names. She tore her whole part. You got to listen to her. I will. She is absolutely awesome. And Thank you for sharing a, that. A, yeah, she put on okay. a, a eating protocol, which was phenomenal. But That's I wanted awesome. to run that past. You. I, I'm, I'm going to have to run I'll, it I'll look into it. I, I hadn't heard of her. I'll look into it. But I do know that people cure themselves of cancer every day. I do know that spontaneous, they call it spontaneous remission occur. Yeah. I want everybody who's dealing with cancer to know this. Just because your doctor says you're good, you know, there's nothing they could do about it doesn't mean it can't reverse. It's been shown that cancer has rever it reverses itself for thousands of years. I'm not saying, you know, that everybody's going to reverse it, but it can be done. And so please do not accept the condemnation, uh, the curse of a medical professional who has, has told you you've got no time. 
It's not fair. It's not right. The fact right. of the matter is, is that cancer does remit and reverse, and many, 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 many people have experienced this. Thank you, Cheryl, for your for your call and for sharing that. Appreciate it. Let's. Uh, poor Rory's been holding on forever. Here, what's going on, man? How you doing, Rory? I, I'm well, thanks, Ben. Hey, I've got a friend I know professionally, probably in his mid 60s, was on Crestor, which is what a statin, right? And I don't know his whole story, but anyway, he was recently diagnosed with Parkinson's. Okay. He said he stopped the Crestor, but he's taking some kind of uh, Parkinson med. So if you could they, just, uh, now he's taking Parkinson. Look. They could easily be related. I'm not saying they are, but they could be, the statin drugs and the Parkinson's, because statin drugs affect cholesterol, and your brain needs cholesterol. I'm t- I yeah. know I said it a million times. I want to say it again. Please understand the biochemical stupidity and manipulation and twisted profiteering of this whole statin baloney crapola scam. Okay? You cannot take a statin drug as, as benign, as gentle as they pur- or purport to be and not expect to get toxicity and side effects. Cholesterol is extremely important stuff. Now, as far as Parkinson's goes, that's a de- degenerative condition of the brain. It's arthritis of the brain. And what you do for Parkinson's is the same thing you do for arthritis or any other degenerative condition. And this is, this is also important because uh, people who have Parkinson's, it's miserable, it's awful, and they're, con- they're cursed by the medical model to just be on drugs, which don't work anyway for many people. Number one, you've got to is- stop the influx of toxins into the blood, and that means digestive toxins, and that means sugar. That means things Things that are uh, foods that aren't getting processed correctly and foods that are leaking in through what's called intestinal permeability or leaky gut syndrome. Guaranteed, if you've got Parkinson's, you've got a problem with a leaky gut. So you've got to work on foods and you've got to work on sugar. And that means eliminating, if I had Parkinson's, I would have zero tolerance for any fast-burning sugars, uh, restricting my carbohydrate intake to just vegetables. That includes no fruits too, by the way. Uh, you don't eat fruits if you have Parkinson's disease. Make sure you're using all your nutrients for helping the body process sugar, which very interestingly and not coincidentally are also nutrients that are important for the brain and the nervous system. The B vitamins, sugar, are important for sugar and the brain and the nervous system. Selenium, important for sugar and the brain and the nervous system. Electrolytes, important for sugar and the brain and nervous system. So all of those nutrients. Plus taurine is also a very underappreciated amino acid for the brain uh, and for the and for blood sugar as well. The amino acid arginine. These are all things your friend should be considering. Okay. Uh, okay. Num- and last but not least, well, a couple other things. Slow D deep breathing, slow, deep breathing, five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon, five minutes at night. And then uh, I talked about this in the past. Get on YouTube, look up glutathione and Parkinson's disease. I would be doing IV injections of glutathione in addition to glutamine, glycine, and whey protein, if he can handle whey protein, which are all helping make his own glutathione. Thank you so much, Rory, for your call. That's just all the time we have for today. On the bright side, thanks for listening, friends. Please check out my website, truthtreatments.com. And if you want to join the Longevity family, I'd love to have you on my team. Call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. 